the wire thickness and connectors. So now we know um, there's current, there's voltage in your pinball machine, and uh, we need like wires like this one to connect your power supply to your coils, to your lights, and so on. And we got like two types of things in pinball. So one are like high current stuff, high current devices or high current um, yeah, yeah, like like um, users, yeah, power users. That's coils typically and lights. Those two are the high current, um, high current things in your pinball, and those are typically connected via like um, AWG uh, sixteen to eighteen wires. Uh, that's the US norm, or in Europe you would go like with one millimeter square ca cables. So this is like an AWG, I think. 16 something yeah 6 18 sorry it's an awg 18 cable yeah so this is roughly yeah roughly a little bit more than more than one millimeter square in in um, european norms uh, you will typically use like the large molex collectors those are like those the large ones and um yeah like if you look at the the resistance of this wire here, that's um, 0 0.014 to 0 0.03 uh, 23 ohms per meter. So one meter is like three feet, but um, it's not zero. It's something. And if you run like a lot of wire, then then also like the resistance will go up. And um, you can probably imagine that having a resistance of 0 0.1 is just like 10 meters of wire. But it might, I mean, the wire is always to to the user and back to the power supply right so basically you have to double the the number here and that's your resistance and, and then that's also the reason why you need that thick wire or wire so because you do not want like high resistance on on your wire if you have high current then you got low current stuff that's stuff like um like any switch I got one here yeah like switches here um there won't be much current flowing here. And for that reason, you typically use like AWG 22 to 26 wires, or in European norms, you typically use 0.14 millimeter square. That's like this kind of wire. So it's really thin compared to the other one, right? That's also super cheap. And um, you, you use those small, like those small Molex connectors here. I will show those in a minute in larger. And uh, the, the resistance of this is actually um, 0.05 to 0.15 millimeter. But you can calculate with roughly um, 0.1 ohm per meter. And that's a lot. So I mean, that's actually a lot. If you run this wire from the back box to your play field, um, then you will easily have like one ohm of resistance over the wire between your switch and your driver board if it's in the back box for example so that's quite quite a resistance it's just something to keep in mind here now um what do you need um you need first and foremost you need um a wire stripper so uh, i got a lot of tools here i made pictures for you but those are wire strippers <laughs> And those both work really well, and um, but you will need those, and you will use those a lot in your pinball machine, right? So, for example, this one, you put the wire in here, you press it, and it will strip your wire. So I can uh, you this one enlarge. So this is like a wire strip, right? It's a Knipex one. It's an expensive one, but um, yeah, they, they both work really, really well. And then there's like um, this one, which works this way. So you put the wire in here, and um, then you can, can strip the wire. You can do this, for example. And now we got this stripped. And we can also have the outside, this stripper here. So that's how those work. Then oh, you also need something like this, like just a normal wire cutter. Just because you will just cut a lot of wires in your pinball machine. So those are basically the, the, the 
three basic tools you need. Um, next, uh, you want to connect your wires, right? So that's why we're here. We want to connect wires. And where do we start? You could say at the plug, but as I, I didn't, I won't cover the plug uh, in, in your in your wall. But the next thing uh, in the chain is your power supply unit. And you often got those uh, screw terminals here. So those would be like uh, screw terminals, and you have to connect those. And the natural thing to do would be what I did here on the right, just screw the wires, but that's not a good idea. I did this on my test bench here, but don't do this in your in your like production pimo machine. Uh, instead, you want those um, those small connectors here. So um, they are called like other uh, endhülsen in German. And in in uh, English they are called uh, I actually don't know. Let me check. They are called ferrules, ferrules, ferrules. Okay, ferrules. And so they called ferrules, <laughs> and those are basically those thingies here. Uh, I got some. Uh, let me show you. I made pictures. So those. You can basically get selections of those. They look like this. So you get selections for all sizes, and then uh, you get like some, yeah, like like a, a tool for that. That's this one, and you can then press those. Um, you select the right size here, so they they are color coded. You select the right size and you press them to the wire. It's important. Um, let's, uh, I will show you. Uh, it's important uh, to actually get one right one. So this is roughly one millimeter square. So we need the red ones. Uh, so they go over here, and then basically you press them here like like that with the tool. That's how it works. But um, your wire needs to be long enough. So this one, for example, is too short now. How to see probably. Um, so th this needs to be up to the top. So the wire in inside needs to be up to the top. That's important. And then this is super safe um, and it will never come loose. You can use this on your AC side, you can use it on DC, but especially please do that if you run like high currents. If you run like 10 or 15 or 20 amps somewhere, please use those. There are also like dual um, connectors, so those here, those are made, those are, those are a little bit thicker at the end, and you can push in two wires. So sometimes on your power supply you only got like four terminals, or yeah, and two for ground, two for power, but you want to connect four wires, then use those dual um, rules and connect both of them to one of the terminals. Then it's safe. Right, that's totally allowed. But I mean, generally, um, I would not like uh, use normal terminals in your machine. But if you run terminals in your machine, some people use those terminal blocks, right? Then you also should use those, because then it's really actually is a safe connection. Uh, which leads us to connectors. So my favorite connectors uh, are like here. <laughs> But I also got them large here on the right. So those are um, Vago connectors. Vago, um, yeah, that's like those. You can, I will show them. I will show them here. You can open them. That. You can put your wire in. It should be stripped a little bit longer than what I did. I fix that. So that. You put them in close it it's no way you're getting it out uh, and the, the, the cool thing is you can also use like a small wire also this and the Vago connector will also connect this to a small wire and that's also like totally inside spec and this will also never come loose so that's super cool it's like a resist uh, it's like vibration resistant everything so those are like actually really cool connectors for prototyping. I think for, for production machines, they're a little bit too expensive. They're, I don't know, 
20 of those are like 20 bucks or something. So they're not super expensive, but reusable and a cool tool for prototyping. Um, then like the other like common stuff in pinball is like, those are the 100 mil Molex connectors. Those are used for, now, now everything is stuck in here, for the small wires. In the middle, we got like Molex connectors for, for large wires. So for this, those kind of wires. I mean, you can also have small wires in the large connectors, but usually like the large connectors are for large currents, which is why you use large wires on those. So those are typically for coils. Those are for, yeah, for like switches and anything which is low current, like less than one or one amp or one to, one to two amps max. And those are often like for seven amps per connector, depending on your crimp. Um, those are like for like um, like those um, yeah flat flat cables, so you can have multiple cables with those. You sometimes see those for like logic connections, sometimes for lights, but usually only for logic. And this is like just a two-row connector of the larger molexes, uh, which is also used, for example, on open pinball project. So that's this connector. It's also similar crimps. Um, which leaves and yeah what i wanted to show on this one is like there are a lot of different ones so those are all molex um yeah molex 156 mil and those are typically connected um to for example the cobra pin board here um so not enough space on my disk here so those go for example on the drivers here right so you got your drivers connect here this one of those connectors uh, but you can also use this one i mean that they all fit right that doesn't matter um really so really oh, i'll get them on but <laughs> uh they should get on there that's sometimes hard to get them on and off but that's what they're supposed to do right they shouldn't come loose easily and this is for the small connectors like that's for for the this one is too long but it doesn't matter. So that's also one that's a cheap knockoff because I think the patents uh, expired, so they are knockoffs. But they all like work somehow, and you just have to get like the right crimps for the right connectors. So, which leave, uh, leads us to like the next topic, and that's crimps. So you need like crimps, and that's my crimp selection here. Uh, that's just on the right. It's like I got like a lot of different ones for different types, and sometimes I'm searching to which one is the right one because you have to look really close to find the differences. Mm, on the left, this is uh, 100 mil crimps, the small ones. This one is from like a roll for for a machine, so those are really really cheap, um, and those are like um, yeah genuine uh, like Molex crimps. Here how they, they look with the wire and here how it's like a new one. And yeah, I could show you here, but it's a little bit hard to see because it's really, really small. So I did, took some pictures in advance. So this is uh, like a crimp, a crimp uh, tool. You put the crimp in here, you press it, and then it's done. Um, but I made you some pictures because like that's that's sometimes I mean, I I failed with that a lot in the beginning. So generally, so here on the top, you see how you cut the wire. So um, this one is basically supposed to go onto the plastic or rubber on the on the wire, right? So that's just for holding the connector. So this roughly, so it could be a little bit more in than on this picture, but it's hard to make this picture. And this one should be only a little bit longer because those two here will then connect over over the wire. And basically you put the crimp into your crimper like that. So they're like different connections. Here's like 20 to 16 AWG, 22 to 20, and this is 28 to 26 or something. And so like for different sizes. So use the right one, you put the crimp in, then you push the wire in from the back, you close it, Press it really hard. That's it. Afterwards, it should be, it should look like this crimp here. 
roughly. So this, this the back should be on the plastic, and this one should be just on the metal. And this this should be a little bit shorter than here, so it shouldn't should go shouldn't go into the connector. But a little bit is okay, but if it's too long, then it will interfere with the pin. So that's how you do crimps. That's the larger ones. That's a little bit easier. Smaller ones are a little bit finicky sometimes, but just get a lot of them. Then you will learn after doing 200 or 400 or 1,000. <laughs> and that's um, like my general take on wiring. So that's what you need to like. It's like all the tools and the connectors you will need in your pinball, in my opinion.